often, like captains will often draft to their player's strength. That's like just a natural thing to do in Dota. Mm -hmm. All right, so moving forward to the second game. You can't ban out OG. I think we got that. Yeah. No. So, so what are you going to do if you're Secret? How are you going to turn things around? Drow strats. Uh, I think Secret often go to Drow strats. I don't know if they'll necessarily do that for sure, but like, they really like these like strong five-man pushy strats sometimes, like dra like the Drow, the Venge, these kind of carries for MP. Lane, good lane. Yeah, heroes. good lane. Venge, Venge yeah. Luna. Maybe they pick Venge in the first two so it doesn't get banned. I I don't know. I, I Maybe they could do like a Venge opening and try to like confuse them and do a Venge support. I know they played Venge support in the past. I don't yep. know. Like they need to try to put less emphasis in the lane in my opinion. They need to balance things out and have maybe a little bit more team fight or catch. Okay. Otherwise they'll run into the same problems again. He looks very comfy. Oh yeah. He's running. Oh, Parallel dies. Yeah, he never he knows he's not playing Ogre this game, that's why he <laughs> looks like <laughs> There we go, Earth Spirit. There you go. That's spirit, spirit number one. Now give me one more spirit and we're yeah. in good shape. Guys. Maybe Ember was banned spirit. last game. I believe, Maybe Ember yeah. Spirit, but not Storm Spirit. Come on. You're okay. not going to ban Storm. All right, all right. You can, you, nah, you, you shouldn't ban Storm. There's just so many other heroes that you want to ban. You, you fifth ban a Storm, you know? If yeah. It's like if you haven't got good Storm Maybe in the second phase, but not in first phase. You want to ban a Lone Druid? Yeah, you, know? you definitely want yeah. to ban out Lone Druid. There you go. Or pick yeah. Lone Druid. I mean, yeah. come on. This time it's, o o I guess, OG banning the Lone Druid since they don't have first pick. Yeah, you know? Seeker sure. has first pick. That's when you know a, a hero is super OP. When you can pick, you know exactly that he's going to be first picked or banned no matter what every single game. Ice Frog, I hope you're watching, buddy. Well, Take we know me. that Dota 2 sent out a tweet about the last premier Dota 2 tournament before Whoa. the invites for the Kiev Major. So they, they promoted... This event. Well, People don't. say Valve don't communicate. Yeah, look at that. Well, Seven hours that. ago, that was a tank tweet, and here we are. Seven and a half hours uh, ago. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> I only just found out about it. <laughs> There's a wall. It's like they first banned Stazzle. Yeah, yeah you, you must be happy now. Hell yeah, they banned it from themselves. Puppy was about to pick it, and then someone went over and banned it on his computer before he... <laughs> I mean, that says that to me, really, they are like thinking Slada, VS, Slada, VS, Slada, VS Drows, yeah. whatever. It's physical damage, like drafts. I mean, that's and also drafts they can push in like five man each towers with very. That also ways. means that they're okay with OG getting the Warlock, though, because that's, I mean, that's a Warlock, go to. Warlock is replaceable, I think. Like, it. It's a long cooldown you can fight around, too. Yeah, I think that's a lot of weakness. That's where the Secret hero. completely crushed IGV in that, that first game around the Global Jesus Silence cooldown. Because anytime Global Silence was down, they were just like running at them, fighting. So uh, the Warlock Ultimate functions in a similar way. Yeah. You can tell how, how much priority they put on the Ember in the first game. They actually banned the Ember in the first phase. And now their first pick, they're picking the Ember right away. They're putting a lot of priority in this hero. So who plays the Ember Spirit? On this team? Is it um, I, I think there's two players, I believe, MP and mid one. Uh -huh. They both play the hero, depending on lane. Okay. First okay. picking an Ember, usually, you know, you see maybe a Nyx reply, uh, uh -huh. Disruptors or OD usually. These are the kind of heroes that are really going to be very good against Ember. Either you draft Catch or you draft hero heroes that are going to destroy Ember in the, in the lane, because usually he's going to go to the mid lane. Yeah, you know, I'm surprised that we are not seeing a lot uh, more heroes that have natural roots picked against Ember. I mean, uh, recently there was a little bit Rod of, of a, Atos. Yeah, there, there's a little bit of a, a buff there with roots against Ember. So yeah. why aren't Maiden. we seeing it? Yeah, yeah Crystal Maiden is great. Yeah, but I'm like, Crystal Maiden why, is you know, great. It's, an OG pick. it's sure. great versus Ember, and it's great w with the Ember. Yeah, because of the mana as well. Hmm? I guess he, this is where they'd normally, like, we've seen them based on their first two games, it's first two pick the Warlock, but you see an Ember, maybe you're thinking you need more lockdown, so. Yeah. Yeah. What about Naga Siren, guys? Great net, huh? Uh, Think about it. Oh, they snatched the Doxia Slada. Oh, boy. A bit of a deny pick with the Slada. Like you're, Slada you're... is great against our Ember. Yeah. Because of uh, the lower armor. The hero is very vulnerable to that. Sure, because when you catch him, you have very limited time to blow him up, and Slardar is great at that, right? Yes. Removes the armor, gets a great stun, and there you go. I mean, and it's the Jerex S4 combo. These guys work so well together, vacuum in a Slardar crash, like... You know they're going to pull it off. Yeah, they it? will pull yeah. it off, and not just once, but probably three or four times this game. So. Of course. But this is survivable, okay? Slardar, people know how to work their way around that hero. Yep. Win rate's not that great. <laughs> we saw that. Pick rate is pretty damn good. Pick though. rate is very high. Pick yeah, rate pick rate's high. high. Win Always rate not so heroes much. with pick rate high usually have lower win rate. Yeah. So Don't show rate. me the win rate again, please. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, that's still above 50% as let, the let most picked hero question. in the current 7.0 no, oh, expat, so... <laughs> nah, it's okay, never mind. Oh, just... It's okay, just give it up. <laughs> yeah. Give it up, pal. All right, all right. So they go for the Crystal Maiden. Uh, yeah. Really good with the Amber. Give him mana. Yeah. And denying it at the same time. Forrest, we did see some great, OG. great ults coming out from Fly last game with the Crystal Maiden. We did. Some game-winning stuff, so nice deny. It works pretty good in their lineup as well, right? Yeah. Reserve time. I like to think so. All right, so looking at these first two picks from either team, what can we think about what they're going to remove from this game so that they don't have to face it? What is what could be really good? For example, against an Ember. Roots. Don't want to face Roots, but which Roots would OG pick? I think you're more looking at the, the counter picks to the end. If you want to run Ember mid, you're trying to ban out some of the counters. Okay. Like OD, the in yeah. Invoker, OD. I don't think OG really run Ursa mid, so maybe less so yeah, that. But I don't think I've seen that. Yeah, the Invoker, that. the OD, perhaps the two main ones there. Um, perhaps you consider the Storm if you're not going to get more lockdown, but you've already got Frostbite, you've got CM, like you can actually keep Storm in place pretty well now. Yeah. Oh, we, we might actually see a Pudge for Secret here this game. I think Pudge is actually really good with their heroes. He uses the Aura from CM. The Bite is a setup for Hook. Ember is a setup for Hook. Pretty yep. good hero with uh, the Ember and the CM. And I think I've seen Puppy play the hero uh, in the past. Maybe not as well as Jerex, but they do run the hero. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's Jerex. He can play <laughs> pretty much anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I like where your head's at there. And uh, especially with like heroes like Slardar, who has a very clear initiation. You have time to kind of react to that and hook people. And so. He's really good against Slardar because he's going to jump in. Uh, stun someone and That's everyone it. is gonna yeah then you can hook and save the target out so Pudge is also really good in that regard sure hmm. they, oh they're taking their time here has the king been stumped no he's just being very careful and patient <laughs> don't worry now they did say they were gonna beat OG with some surprise unpredicted picks, yeah. Unpre picks yeah. where, where are they slacks? I didn't, they're coming one, that's why he's freaking nothing's... out right now <laughs> <laughs> he's freaking himself out He's just picturing Puppy's face in his head right now. He's yeah. like, oh, here they come. Like, I don't know what to do. Earlier today, we didn't like an early Ember pickup. No, we didn't. Do we like it now? I mean, there's all um, the chance to counter it still on the side of OG. Yeah. But maybe that is the mind game. Oh. Maybe, maybe this they, Ember is not going mid. Or maybe because uh, I think Secret values this hero a lot. Because in the Pierce game, I say they ban it. And now they immediately first, first pick the hero. Yeah. So they don't really care about the counters that you have. They just rate the hero really high. Okay. All that time for a Slark ban. A yeah. Slark ban, yeah. Is Slark, Slark that big? Slark is really good with uh, Darks here. Hmm. And they might be thinking of uh, Dark Pack as a counter to the Frostbite and the Chains. So that is one of uh, one of the better core heroes against the Amber and CM. That could be a top process. No Tail's played a bit. He goes for the different build with the Echo Saber Blink. And it's like this fast-paced, tempo-controlling Slark that fights a lot earlier, more aggressively. So it's not like a unplayed peer for OG as well. And there's still the life stealer that's gonna but that's do like roughly the, the same thing. OG don't really. I've never. I feel like I haven't seen them play like a slider life stealer. Not to say they won't, but it feels less their style. Hey, that's a Nyx assassin ban. Oh, I see, Jake. Look, you know what I'm what I'm thinking. Of course, of course, the classic bat rider making way, right? Or Kotal of the Light. The Hoodle? Oh, yeah, Kotal. Kotal is pretty good. Yeah. You dare mention Kotal on I this dare panel? mention Kotal. I mean, you might have just... <laughs> What's wrong with Kotal? Nothing. Nothing's wrong with Kotal. He's just the most, like, hidden OP person in the game right now. Yeah, Nobody like, picks him, but like he's Omni super Knight. damn good. Just like Omni Knight. No, oh, Omni Knight is counterable. How do you counter Kotal? He destroys your early game. You he get destroys Lotus your lanes. You, you Lotus counter him by picking Nixus. You get BKB. Nah, that's true. But Lotus Orb is a great uh, counter to Kotal, but, I mean, he's just so good at all points in the game. He's just strong so he has no stuns he mana does leak. have rod of Athos. <laughs> that's a root okay yeah. mana, mana leak is somewhat a stun yeah. oh like, indeed unreliable but it, mana it leak a plus a four staff plus a blinding light is yeah, a very sure. reliable yeah. stun yes 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 all right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he just walked into my trap fool <laughs> I mean, basher is a reliable stun if you want to put it that way you know <laughs> basher, <laughs> ma basher, basher mask of madness stun. there we go there you go Cuddle with a reliable stun there you go spirit breaker is a reliable stun <laughs> Thank but. you. Thank you for that. <laughs> Today I learned. <laughs> okay, so Invoker, Invoker is going to be picked up here. Uh, like makes a, a lot of sense, right? The pseudo counter pick for mid. Might be a Quas Wax Invoker. Though. I was wondering that, but then, like, with Slada, like, having the Sunstrike sun with the yeah. Blink Crush is nice, but 
the same time, if you're worried about like a fast pace, Secret like to play early game mm. Dota. Like they like to win their lanes, and that's where Quasworks is going to be more a safer option. I mean, still open. I think for their lineup, doesn't really matter if they want to go Quasworks or Exot. Both could mm. work. And see what like carry and other cores come out. Yeah, from, if if you go for like first. an exot invoker, then your safe laner has to be much more of like an active carry, like someone like a Klinks, you know. Oh, faceless so, void picked up. Yeah, the void plus crystal uh, main, and that's something OG like to run before. Interesting. I think Kezu used to play a lot of back in yeah, the Yeah, he, he likes days. void, yeah. and usually when they pick CM and void, uh, on OG they pick uh, either. Uh, Elder Titan usually. I, I mean, I said Pudge. I think Pudge could also still work really yeah. well with the void. Pudge could work on OG too, couldn't he now, though? Oh, Not with Slider, Slider, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're looking so. for the Fly Hero. So. I hear you. When uh, Kezu played a lot of Faces Void, this was in the Double Bubble era. Oh, yes. And if you're thinking about a Double Bubble, maybe not anymore now that there's a Disruptor, but sure. Puppy does play very mean Enigma. That's the catch for the Amber, and pretty good against the Void in the lane because yeah. of the Glimpse. Mm -hmm. so overall, very solid pick by OG. But well, let's see. It's they don't have any save as the like one of their downsides. I was thinking like, would they consider like Avenger or something against the Chrono? But if someone gets Chrono, like they, they yeah, don't really have a good defensive. Yeah, that's the downside of their heroes. So, but then they have the vacuum into the Disruptor right. Ultimate. Hey, call it back. This used to be like the first two picks of like every. Was this like Manila? Not Manila made. Even Gosh, going further back. Dude, Elder Titan and Amber. Do you know what changed? Elder Titan and Amber is so strong now. Mm. Because the, the the spirit is uh, all magic, so it doesn't really affect the Elder Titan and Amber, and they buff the aura where it's a larger AOE now. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, because one, yeah, one's around you, the, the spirit yeah, the, one's around you. The physical hero. is yeah, yeah. around you, but with Amber it doesn't really matter because it's all spell. The yep. hero. So, uh, Elder Titan plus Amber is very strong, plus the CM. He looks kind of happy with this draft so far. Yeah. yeah. That's a very solid draft by Secret. They clearly have a plan. Yep. Chrono Earth Splitter, good stuff. That was like the old OG duo. They used to open with these two heroes. They all the ban time. out the Bat Rider on OG, so they are expecting Void to be their safe lane. And okay. Looking for a Kezu hero like a Bat Rider, but I think Kezu could play Void just fine. Depending on how they want to lane. If they want to have a safe lane Void, because if you go safe lane Void, uh, uh, maybe not this game though. Not great he, against the Dark. Yeah, not great lane. against Dark. Even and, like, the Slider, you even if yeah. he's, whether he's there or not, it's gonna be a tough lane. And out. CM is not a CM's not a support that zones off laners, and that's definitely one of the weak weaknesses of. Unless the, the you hero. do a tri lane, like yeah. the other Titan has to go to the safe lane together with the CM, then you can zone. It's not like a dazzle disruptor, like a typical five position support that can yeah. do it on its own now. You know, one thing that Elder Titan got buff as well in this patch was because of the camp. If you go to the off lane, there's three camps. Mm. So if you get the spirit at level one, you can hit all the camps and you run to the lane and you get a lot of damage, more damage than before. It's a small little thing. Ember is going to be safe lane, it looks yeah. like. Safe or, lane, unless it's Queen of Pain safe lane. But that yeah, seems... they could do either way. I don't know. I mean, it's a tough lane with the Darkseer Slaughter, which makes me think maybe they would yeah, consider may Queen Maybe they put Queen against the Darkseer lane. Yeah. Oh. That's possible. But they have a one more combo setup. The Chrono will be the base of their idea, and all the spells will just go in. Wow. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's uh, okay. It's a fighting carry. I mean, you, you get the. That makes me think it's going to be the Exot Invoker. Yeah, Exot Invoker. CK's done into Sun Strikes. Yeah. Like, I, but I, they I, have a lot of wave clear for the illusions. They have the Corp and Elder yeah. Titan. So they have yeah, very good yeah. spells for that. See you looking. Are you confident that Secret will bring this oh back? My god. Oh god. Uh, picking Quap into a Disruptor, huh? Uh, that's an that interesting happened. choice. Uh, I don't know how they're going to do it. Secret's got this sword in the back. Doesn't make any sense to okay. me, but it's mm. fine. I'll tell you, CK. CK? Not so Bad sure. hero, you think? Not so sure about what CK can do this game. What are you talking All about, right, man? man? Early game. Well, then, That's then, early game, so but his illusions won't work so well, I think. Hey, thank you. Thank you for joining the camp. <laughs> Alright, we're going to find out if OG can uh, take this one 2-0, or if Secret can uh, bring it back for a third game. It is over to OD, Pixel, and Fog. Thank you very much, Steve. And indeed, well, Fog, some very interesting drafts coming out from both sides here. I mean, Faceless Void, Queen of Pain to finish it off, CK coming out from OG. Puppy going back to his roots too. CM, I mean, Elder Titan, like... And they've I mean, got the roots as well with CM and Ember. And we get to find out who's playing which one too. We got we got the pie on the Crystal Maiden too. We just have a very different draft coming out. Noto wants to play the CK as well. Definitely a much harder game this time around for OG. Okay. I do okay, think you feel that... a bit more confident in Secret this... this... This lineup. Uh, they picked you. They already picked a very different from the last game. Last game they didn't really have a crazy amount of team fight, like we mentioned a lot of times. This time it's like team fight central. Everyone's a team fighter. They're gonna be ready to go. 
they are a little bit, uh, you know, they're cool, like their cooldowns are a little bit longer. 100 on Earth Splitter, like 120 or whatever on the 140 on Chrono early on. Same thing with Queen of Pain ulti. So it's gonna be the Ember Spirit making the like early game plays with like the low cooldowns. But we'll For see sure. how what they're able to really like do with it because it's 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 very wombo combo-y. and I think CK is the hero that is gonna struggle a lot in this in this game. And I think one thing as well that's gonna be interesting to see how it pans out is. If you kind of just look at the, the damage distribution both teams have in their lineup between physical and magical, OG have a good kind of pseudo combo. They have this slider, they have the minus armor, they've got the physical, they've also got the magic combos from like Disruptor and Invoker. You look at Secret, there there's very little physical that's going to be coming out here. I mean, maybe if Kezu gets some items down the lines, but you know, on that, that kind of offlane void, he's going to be picking up the utility search. They aren't going to have the right clicks. They are, of course, going to have an insane amount of magical with the Elder Titan yes. aura, with the veil pick up on an Ember Spirit. If they can get good timings, they are going to absolutely melt OG in some of these team fights. But if this game gets to a certain point, it feels like OG's damage is just going to scale that little bit better. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still very worried for the Phantasm in general, though. But once Invoker is able to get online too, which I mean, it's going to happen eventually if they get into that, into the later stages. It'll be really strong for them since, like, yeah, they're just having very little physical damage and not really the greatest, like, tower push or objective taking on the side of Secret Wall. OG does have that. They have the, you know, the Invoker, which can naturally kind of push in a way once he gets his levels up. And the same thing with his CK. If they do get, like, a big team fight, wipe with the Phantasm afterwards, he can easily siege. I'm looking at the lanes at the moment. Down bottom, Puppy, helping out Kezu. Got that 2v2 going on there, top lane. S4 and Jerex making a bit of a go here on to MP, yet to skill. Holding on to that early skill point. Who's got the salve? Seven tangos as well, so he is prepared for a bit of harassment from the side of OG. Yep, I like this too. Pi, I mean, there's no way that Pi can even do anything to help in that top lane. He can bite some Ion Shell creeps, but that's useless pretty much. So, just jungling, getting his levels, get his Arcane Aura up, and Queen of Pain should be just fine to get experience and last hits under the tower top anyway. I mean, well, why the Queen of Pain this, this game before? Let's talk a little bit more about that. This is a hero that, you know, we don't see a lot, and has kind of picked up on the panel. You, you're picking it into to heroes that can deal with it, like this Disruptor, in terms of catch. I think they wanted something that can just stand in that safe lane and not have to really worry about Ion Shell. That was just the yeah. big thing for them. Okay. They just wanted to have these, like, two ranged heroes, not to have to worry about, like, the Slaughter, Slaughter and Darkseer versus melee heroes. You walk up to get a last hit, you get crushed, you're under ion, double Ion Shell. It just blows up in your face. While Queen of Pain, you just sit, farm under the tower, and the rest of your team can, like, just do what they, whatever they want. It's the same approach that they did kind of in the last game. Remove the focus off the safe lane, help the other lanes out as much as possible. Mid lane at the moment, 11 for 4 against the 8 for 2. And I'll see mid one with the lead. Only slightly, though. Puppy, coming around, hunting here for Jarax. has that DD rune on the other Titan. And uh, looks like he's not going to be able to get quite close enough. Top lane, potential bit of a wrap round here from the CM. Pi, coming into position. Uh, they are hunting for S4. It's fairly low. Uh, immediately TP's back out. Gives himself over towards the shrine and will look to clear some of the jungle camps. Fortunately, unfortunately for himself, does get the rock columns in one of them. Yep, Puppy with that DD rune just jungling as well. Both teams just trying to get as much as possible during the laning phase. And Secret coming up slightly ahead, just a couple CS advantage right now. But we'll see where the action does happen because it looks like this one's going to be quite a passive one in the laning phase. Yeah, absolutely. As you mentioned, just both teams having those heroes able to utilize jungles. And it's safe S4 gets himself a, a nice little stack getting going here as well. So he won't be leaving this area anytime soon. As I look to pick up that XP and gold, Jerex. Let's see where he starts to make his next movement. Coming towards the mid lane uh, with that level 3. But uh, already, you see the Ember Spirit backing off. I think Kezu definitely needs, needs to be careful in uh, in the next couple minutes or uh, next couple seconds or so. Once CK gets another level and once Slardar is down there, they're going to be able to get the Reality Rift, stun, double stun, sun strike on top, and that'll be enough to be able to bring him down. But Kezu has to watch out. His time walk is on cooldown. Notel's looking to go on the aggressive here. Kezu, bottom lane, looks like this is where they're trying to make the first move. Kezu okay, so can he play his way out of this one. Three seconds, and he will have time walk again. They are hunting for him. He'll go deeper, hiding himself in the trees. Jarek's trying to cut his way through, but they'll just turn their attention to the puppy. Beat on. Absolutely, puppy was just chasing down the disruptor there, beating him up. Throws out the spirit, isn't going to be quite enough damage here as it will be fly to take him down with a final touch with that thunder strike. So puppy just going in fully aggressive onto the disruptor. 
but OG able to move maneuver themselves around him and end up beating him down. Yeah, it was very close to getting Fly. Fly held his skill points there too, trying to get. I think maybe he was trying to like save for like the glimpse for Kazu to try to get it perfectly timed. But yeah, they were just unable to kill Kazu, but getting puppy anyway. And no till, taunting Kazu with the reality rip in the bottom lane and gets bashed twice. They lose a lot of HP there for him. And mid lane, we are seeing Anna catching back up. Only a few CS in and now. Jarax. Wanting to try and go for a play, but Secret are prepared for this. With Pilot out of the neighborhood, Puppy teeping across as well. Jarek's in a lot of trouble there. The Stomp comes through, and the Slardar's out. OG, only the team themselves that's good with the reactions, but Secret there are the ones coming out on top yeah. in that mid lane. Pi was, Pi was already prepped. I, yeah. the, the ward that they had in the enemy jungle, that they had in OG's jungle, actually spotted the root movement coming out. And Jarek's actually pings it right afterwards after the rotation, but the ward does actually expire now. And Ana with his solo kill in midwood? Well, the uh, Chinese observer there did not expect that. And uh, I don't think we did either. I mean, that is... That shouldn't happen there, should it, Fogged? I mean... He got Anna. just... Uh, he had a lack... Just three-spot combo. Yeah. Alacrity and uh, right clicks with cold snap, and then he predicted a sun strike, and midwood just backed up into it. Just very nice play by Ana. Very, very impressive him outplaying that mid lane. Absolutely. Oh, mid lane... Eight. Again, this continues to be where the focus is. Jarex, kind of closing on to mid one, does get the crush. Blame guard out though in secret, bringing him back up. Up he's there. They were going to send him more if needs be. Yeah, Make they sure put the mid that. one doesn't go down again. OG put their mid ward down, so they're able to watch the the TPs coming into their tower and if anybody's just sitting in the mid lane. I mean, th thanks to that kill as well. Anna's going to have a very good timing on that Midas. And at this stage, you know, it's only a few hundred gold to go. Yeah, that's Seven actually massive. Minus, that. He's gonna have an ex incredibly that's... early one when yeah, he that's was. Huge. Yeah, that's, that's just very big. Here we go. Secret making their first rotation. Queen of Pain, level six. They've got Sonic Wave on live. They wanted. They wanted. They don't want Ana to get this. They want to slow down the timing on the Midas. Yeah, it, this yeah. is a big kill if they get it here. Uh, as huge as the Midas pickup would be, you know, equally huge if Secret can kill them before he picks up their recipe. I think they have a big indicator though. Puppy is the one farming top now, so it's like, okay, where the hell did Queen of Pain go? They're making a play right now, guys. Watch out. Ana goes to the jungle. S4 as well. Fly makes the rotation toward the top lane. They want to kill Puppy now. They don't want him to be able to farm and get levels in this lane freely. So are they going to use the smoke as well? They are going to actually go for the smoke just to guarantee the the play on the top lane, but Secret might be able to get there in time to react. And they did get the space he needed. Seven minutes in, that Midas money is complete. They will have that fantastic timing. Can OG get themselves something done up top? MP? Well, actually, well, come on, out by the initial stomp, no follow through. Didn't have any further catch, of course, at this stage. Fly yet to hit that six. They're just level four in the disruptor. So not enough lockdown really to deal with that quite queen of pain unless they catch him aggressively jumping in. Yeah, that is that is not the target that they wanted to find in that situation, but No tail. No boots. He goes for the straight dominator build on the CK. Yeah, I guess just not really feeling the pressure at all here in this 1v1 against Kezu. Yep, here we go. Mid rotation. Typical no tail. Leaving bottom lane around the seven to ten minute mark. Usually toward the enemy safe lane to make a play happen, but this time he tries to go mid to kill mid one, but mid one trying to be efficient with his flame guard and with his remnants farming up in their jungle. Uh, Jerex as well, just aggressively Pi. maneuvering over. Oh, Pi gets the frostbite on the dominated creep and gets himself 125 gold. Uh, so rich CM. Big stuff for Getting that early game money. Kezu. I mean, what, what would you expect the build will be here from, from Void this game? Does he just pick up the Vlads early on, or...? Uh... Dominator, right? Dominator? Yeah, I okay. think so, right? Yeah, he's... Dominator, dominator. himself. Yep. Maybe Dominator, maybe into Vlads. Probably just be like this Aura, Aura Void. Yeah. Even though he's their only, like, physical damage. I mean, that really is the thing. That's why I wonder if there, there will be a sort of a change. Maybe just... He might go just Dominator into, like, Treads into deciding afterwards like maybe he can go for a defusal maybe just go straight back just straight for a vlads into like a blink dagger just be the setup for his team we'll see how they really want to use this void we don't really know just yet if he's going to be just the setup or if he's going to actually be the transition damage physical damage dealer well, flies headed down bottom looking to pick up some some experience getting himself that level six online pie cares in the neighborhood they are also bringing in puppy as well and uh fly uh, she's just going to back up immediately so they won't find a kill with the three presents on that bottom lane secret, but they may get a tier one out. Yep. 
early tower is very important for them. We keep saying they don't really, don't even know if tower push, so top lane, Jarex gets a stun onto MP. MP definitely has to watch out. They are pinging him out right now. They do want to get another stun with the Sun Strike combo. Here we go. S4 tries to get the vacuum on him. It does Ooh. not just off the mark. Yeah, it doesn't quite have the range. Yeah, that that would have been a definite kill if he gets crushed. They're, they have the Sun Strike follow up. Ana was definitely watching. Oh, I know he's there. Top lane. Yeah, oh, found him. They, reality ripped him out of it, but oh my goodness, that was scary. No tail, reality ripped him on the opposite side of the trees. <laughs> that could have gone. That could have been bad. Well, they get a tower out of this one as well, by the way. It looks like Kezu may be able to get the tier one trade. Jarek's already TPing over to the shrine. And uh, may see if he can cut anything off here from Secret Puppy to send the spirit in. Even the vision up. The tower still stands on the bottom lane. Let's see where OG had S4. Just into the jungle here of a secret. They don't want to give this tower up for free. Of course, that's a scary, scary thing, really. It feels like it's the Anna's farm. It's it, He is not being contested whatsoever so far. He is 1k ahead of the Ember Spirit. And this is going to be an incredibly fast Midas into Iconim's timing. Uh, if he uh, continues to kind of get away with this free farm that he's having in the mid lane. Yeah. As soon as they saw mid one pick up the Invis in the bottom lane, that's when Jarex just bails out. They know this tower is... It's just forfeit. There's five heroes rotating down there, so. Oh, well, smoke up from OG. Looking to go for a sort of a play behind Anna. Maybe hoping that Anna would be a sort of a bait here attempt, but attention also They're being both doing this. Stop. This is like a mirror movement right now. Secret's trying to gank Jarex yeah. farming, and OG's trying to gank, gank puppy farming. Gank the fours. Who's going to make the first jump? It looks like bottom's going to be the first bit of action as Jarex indeed in a lot of trouble there with the chains. At the same time, though, in beautiful <laughs> synchronization, Puppy goes down just as Jarex does there. That's like, that's actually so cute. I love that. It's literally the, both teams it, doing, being on the really exact was. same page. I don't think I've ever seen something like that before. As you mentioned, just a reflection between the two teams. The one advantage for OG out of that one is that Ana gets the last hit, so he gets the bonus experience from the Sun Strike and the kill involvement. And then the bonus for Secret is that they're getting more damage on the tier 2 than OG was able to put out. They've got to be careful though, because, you know, coming into the tier, uh, sorry, into the shrine here, backup is there. OG are ready to fight. Fly does have the static storm. They've got good catch. They got the glimpse on mid one. Yeah, and that's the big catch. He gets oh, the remnant off though. Oh, beautifully juked out there. The ending of that. Kezu drops the chrono, actually catching two heroes on the tip of it there. The Sonic Wave comes through. Not quite enough damage to bring down S4 or Fly. Low tail is going to be the one to be dropped. Jarex, crush onto Void. They'll get Kezu in return. Can they chase down anything more here, OG? Jarex will look to try and cut off from the sideline. Still two remnants out from mid one. He's a little low on the mana. Glimpses in 15 seconds. Ana's rotating as well. Are they going to be able to catch anybody here mid one? Jarex does get the stun on him. Can they actually finish him off, though, with this control? The Sun Strike would have done it, but it's a little off the mark there. So mid one is able to remnant out. He's going to be A-OK, -okay, but the turnaround now comes from Puppy as he comes in with the ultimate. It was a lockdown onto Slardar. Jarex is out. And a Secret, they're not done chasing back. They'll look towards S4. MP, flinging forward S4. Can he go for the S4 Dukes? That's the question here. And he looks like he may just be able to. He's he's keeping out to the mid lane. In fact, MP's not going to look for him. MP turns towards Ana. He quickly goes for the TB. Oh, gets the Frostbite. In with the Frostbite. Do they have detection, though? And I don't think they do. Fuck, they don't need it. The scream comes in from MP. Cuts down onto the Invoker. Quick limbs back onto mid one to make sure he can't finish off Fly. S4 still remains alive though. Those Dukes there down bottom. And they'll be able to farm himself. That takes a little creep wave there on the TP out. But all in all, Secret punching back hard. Great play from mid one there. Just, I mean, that, that was like a two minute chase pretty much that happened. But the remnant dodge on the glimpse into the static storm, if you do it at the perfect time, you're able to just get out of that. So. OG committing their big team fight ultimate, and then just getting, even though it's just a one-man chrono catching the disruptor, CK just, we're, it's showing why we were talking about how it's just not really that strong. He gets caught in the searing chains, and then he's just like walking back and forth. He doesn't really do damage at this point yet. He needs a lot more items to be a really prominent force in this game. Oh, Jarex top. Ah, he's in so much trouble here. I mean, magical damage. They've got it for days there, secret. Bursting him down. And this is, it certainly feels like this point of the game is where Secret are going to be very strong with their ability to execute. You know, if Fly is unable to to get that initial catch, you know, he has to get these good static stones because otherwise, you know, Secret will be jumping around, bursting down the members of OG. Yeah. With that magical damage they have there. 
at disposal. Yeah, I'm just I'm just still like just looking at No Tail because I don't really feel like he's making like misplays in this game on the CK. I just feel like this is kind of the nature of the hero. He can't flash farm, so his CS is he has like 56 CS even though he was free farming in the bottom lane at 14 minutes now, and he's just trying to run around and make stuff happen. But his hero just isn't really all that good at doing anything right now. He's not good at farming. He's not really good at finding pickoffs. So what 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 is the real use of the CK right now? And they 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 have to try to find a way to enable him with the ion shell maybe that could be one of the potentials. But definitely just showing the weakness of the CK pick and just the strength overall of OG, of uh, Secret's magic damage and team fight oriented lineup right now. For sure. I mean, we could certainly start to see uh, things change when Anna turns up to the fights because yes, so absolutely. far he's pretty much just been a sunstrike in these engagements. He's he's not turned up in person. Yeah. The... Obviously wanting to wait for the Aghanims, which he is going to have very very shortly. So that, that Aghanims pickup could be when we start to see the team fights change in favor of OG. Yeah, the Aghanim's pickup and the Slardar Blink Dagger are yeah. two of like the the massive ones, and I'm I'm all for that, but I'm still waiting to, to hear like how I feel, what what's gonna enable the CK to do? Is that gonna be enough to make this a actual prominent hero in the game? We will find out. Ana has gonna have his Aghanim's in about 30 seconds or so. Very high level. Uh, Secret with the smoke as well. They have all the ultimates at the ready. Coming across the top lane. Can they find anything though? They can't really come straight across onto the shrine there. And that high ground, no tail knows what's up. They drop down an observer there, secret. So they've got a bit of vision. Sunstrike coming down onto Puppy. It's not enough to finish him off. The static storm will catch out two here. Remnant four from mid one. Puppy as well there coming through with the huge ultimate, but it's not big enough. It's secret. who have lost three. They'll lose Puppy as well. MP remains alive. Can he go back in? He's got a bit of mana to play with. Has to be careful of Anna's presence there, as he will blink himself out. Beautiful static storm there by Fly. Yeah, with it really the, with broke the up the whole fight. Yeah, him and uh, S4, just again, S4 is Dark Seer, like we saw last game, just always on point with the vacuum setting up the big team fights. Just really nice plays there. It's even like no tail being able to get the low ground vision onto the Elder Titan. They bring down the Void without the Chronosphere being used as well. So just nice little opportunistic play coming out from OG. And Ana now does have the Aghanims finished up. Yeah, it looks like he's got. Of course, a booster travel queued up as well, so yeah. that will certainly allow him to, to turn up even more frequently to these engagements that are happening. Jarex picked up a... and bottom lane, Jarex is going to go down as well, speaking of him. Oh, well, uh, again, with the amount of mute damage they have. I mean, we're seeing Jarex, he's, he's kind of unfortunate from this game. He's getting picked off time and time again, which, as you mentioned, is really setting back that blink time, dagger timing ball. Three seconds stun, Sunstrike on top, goodbye MP. Yeah, he's absolutely gone. So that's, I guess, the one really nice thing that they're going to have with the CK. I mean, it's not really ideal as your, you know, your one carry being you know, like a setup for Sunstrike, but CK stun is, you know, it, he has a, it's a four second duration on this Ember Spirit, on this Queen of Pain, on this Void, these heroes that want to be able to just like jump in and out constantly. So they do at least have that to be able to burst people down and lock them down. And Kezu and Puppy clean up this stack. This will put Kezu fairly close to that Blink Dagger. But he has picked up, uh, well, he's looking to pick up next after the Helmet Dominator. So he's going, okay, yeah, I like this. He's just being the setup. I thought it was yeah. going to, I thought it might be this just because of how much damage they already have on their team. They're not really looking to be physical damage. They're just focusing completely on magic. So just him being the big setup for the Wombo combo is just really what they need. I mean, for sure. I mean, we, we talked about the fact that Seeker are all in on the, the, the kind of magical damage. Yeah, absolutely fine at this stage of the game. You know, there's, there's not going to be any BKBs anytime soon from the members of OG. Not necessarily something a lot of them want to be building as well. Yeah. Even though they may feel pressure to do so just because of the damage that uh, Secret are doing and just like that once again. What's happening to Jerax this game, Fog D is not having a happy time. They're just I I, th I don't think it's what's, I don't know if it's really what's happening to Jerax, it's what's happening to OG. They don't feel strong enough to do their usual Alright guys, let's group up and take fights. Let's group up and go for building pushes, let's group up and do this. Jerax is like, I need to get my blink dagger before we can do anything. He we just can't. We we can't group up and fight with the with our heroes. It's just not possible versus Secrets lineup. They have way too much way too much spell damage, way too much team fight at this time compared to ours, so I think this is gonna be happening time and time again until he gets his blink dagger. Like and he's just gonna keep doing it. He's just gonna keep going bottom lane, pushing yeah, out yeah. the lane, get trying to farm it. He, he needs has it. to. He has to, he really does. And maybe, you know, as, as you mentioned, you know, we know that OG can look at situations like this and they, they could try and fight around it. You know, if they know that Secret are gonna be gonna go for those easy kills so far into Jarax, OG could certainly look to try and turn it around next time it goes down. 
Yeah, it's like, do we want to either we turn around and we kill the people who are going for Jarex, or just be as efficient as possible when they kill Jarex, farm everything else as much as we can. S4, top, gets chained up. Mid one is on top of him. Are they able to stop this TP? They will not. And not quite enough damage there, and uh, Control and Dita hold him back. How are you liking this as well? You know, Pike going for the old Midas. school, getting the Midas CM online. I, I think it's perfectly fine. He got it at a pretty reasonable time. He's been very uh, very keen on keeping the vision up, having sentries, having wards in his inventory, smokes as well. So I think it's a perfectly fine pickup in this game with the advantage that they have. Here we go. Smoke coming out. What are they going to find? No tell. Find the Ancients. There's the setup. Kazumizi just coming in. Dropping the Chronosphere. And this back one, but the Sonic Wave already out. And no tell. Well, pop the ult. In fact, he stays alive. No tail. He's still alive. He oh survives this. He gets out. The turnaround onto MP. What? Oh, jeez. They turn that around absolutely beautifully. That I was mean... just really good team, like, team spells. Yeah. He, he glimpsed out the void, even though, like, and threw the, yeah. he, he threw his ulti and wall and everything on top of the, their, like, the void who was getting glimpsed out anyway. But then the that Phantasm was... ends up dodging one or two spells, the Sunstrike on top. And the Jerax wraparound to get the, I think it was the Queen of Pain, I believe. That was just beautifully done by OG. Even though it looked like Secret had like the great opportunity to kill the CK instantly, just being tanky enough with his dredge, with his magic stick charges, and using the Phantasm to dodge a couple spells. Just really well played by OG. They now have that Blink Dagger, which they needed, they needed so badly on Jerax. Absolutely huge. I mean, that... Uh, again, we're kind of in game one. We saw sort of a fight where you know suddenly OG really found their footing, and then at that point onwards, it started to go downhill for Secret. And we'll see if uh, a similar situation could arise off the back of it. And OG certainly looking to keep the momentum going as they move into the jungle of Secret, and they're looking for further pickoffs already. Jarax on the hunt. And Kezu, he actually reveals himself there as he farms the lane. Sunstrike coming in as well. Will get the chance. The time walk out, but the vision's there with the amplifier. He gets glimpsed back, taken down. TP in will be cancelled from Secret, not wanting to throw any more bodies at OG. And they're finding that momentum fog. They are indeed. Ana now finishes up the Yule Scepter. He's got his bots, Midas, everything. All of his core items are done. Going back for a Blink Dagger now. Uh, Fly, Glimmer Cape finished up, which is a super important item in this game versus Secret's lineup, like we mentioned multiple times. Heavily focused on the magic damage. We see S4 now going back for the pipe as well, so they're starting to get the tools that they need to deal with Secret's lineup. And Ana is absurdly farmed. 12,800 net worth, 3,500 3, over the next person. But at the same time, No Tail is still suffering. The only 7,000 net worth, he's uh, like 3,000, uh, 2,000 behind the. Or, uh, sorry, but Matt, Matt's hard right now, Mike. 1,500 behind the Queen of Pain, the other safe laner, so. He is at a bit of a deficit, but they do get the Aegis and a good swing in momentum for sure. A secret. Oh, they've got to be a little worried. They they need to find something big to, to kind of swing themselves back across. Uh, they go for a smoke, but Jarex just immediately blinking away, making sure that they don't find anything with that initiation attempt from mid one. You know, as we were saying, you know, this the damage is going to to really fall off as it goes on. Secret, and as you mentioned, yeah. OG. Coming in with all the tools that they need to to out sustain secret in these team fights. Oh, here we go. The big play coming in mid. They're, they're stacked up. Oh, beautiful setup for Jarek to jump in and hit onto two MP. Will get the blink out. A puppy's going to be left behind. Jarek's actually going to continue to try and chase down the Queen of Pain. They're going for the glimpse. They do find it. And they get the crush. They do get yeah, it. Yeah, they get it beautifully. OG. They are not letting Secret regain this momentum at all. It really does feel like it's it's the same play that we that we kind of saw in game one. You know, this this start that seems very close, but suddenly when it comes down to the fights, this kind of 20 minute or so mark, OG pull it together and Secret just starts to fall behind. Yeah, OG after like after that big team fight near the Ancients, this is where yeah. we see this is the OG that we see. Group up, five man. OG. Oh, No Tail actually gets a proc on his illusion now too, so they're able to get a little bit of siege onto the tier three. And no, well, no Queen of Pain here for 15 seconds. I did their best to try and clear out the illusions, but uh, already tier three down to about a third of its life. Yeah, that was great momentum, great siege of siege of opportunity by OG. This is something that's really important that I think. People at home, anyone can just learn from it. There's a Queen of Pain dead. Don't go back, split up and farm and stuff. You know, you can get some damage on the tier three. Even though your verse is like this big wombo combo and stuff like that, you want to take advantage of when these people are dead rather than just always farming. Getting tier three damage is very important, forcing the glyph. 
Great calls by OG. No tail. Spotted out. That should be a pretty easy kill onto No tail. I mean, TPs are coming across. Uh, good corona here from Kazo. That looks to set up for a second. And they will indeed get it. Fly to pull as well. So secret. And you exactly what they need. And can they actually send it into more? They'll jump forward looking for Anna on the Invoker. But between the two of those, they don't have detection. So Anna's going to be out and safe. This will allow Secret to put the pressure onto the Tier 1. So now managing expand... to regain some of the momentum that they lost. They did spend three ulties to get that kill and go for this. So now, I think OG, when the CK and the Disruptor respawn, this is going to be their time to go. Maybe buy a smoke and just look for a play. Because the ultimates have long cooldowns, as we mentioned a few times. 90 seconds left on Chrono. Elder Titan, 65 seconds. Queen and Pain ulti, set, uh, 100 seconds as well. So maybe they'll go for this bottom Tier 1 tower. Try to push out the bottom wave and get more map control from that because they already have three very aggressive wards to watch secrets movements probably the play yeah we should definitely see them go on the aggressive here what do you think about the choice from Kezu as well is he is going for that bkb on the the void so so playing very defensive we, we aren't going to see any sort of damage come out from himself just wants to make sure that he's able to uh not get just glimpsed and killed inside of the static static True. storm and also always be able to get in the position to do use time dilation on the invoker he wants to just get into the front lines and make sure that he's not able to just constantly re-invoke spells and get different things so i think that's his idea behind it since they already have the damage dealers on the other heroes he's just trying to be the the, the, dis the disrupting hero as a void rather than much else Anna, forge spirits out and putting the pressure onto this bottom lane og Going with the smoke. They have 20 seconds on Chrono, 30 on Quapple. This is the opportunity to go for the bottom tower. And Anna just oh, soloing yes. heroes easily there. I mean, it is just a CM, but he does it in style. OG there we go. They to have set a high ground more. vision ward. Do, will they get the glimpse onto Puppy? They will not. They wanted to get a bigger target. And now Secret does know that ward is up, but it, it's going to be expiring quite soon. But yeah, great. Again, another great call from OG. Of course, all the ultimates from Secret were expended, as we mentioned. Oh, they go for a smoke secret, but immediately it's dispelled here. They know action's on the high ground. Mid one tries to look for it there, but with the Yules, they're not going to actually get the catch here. It's going to be OG with the catch. Vacuuming Tomb into the Static Storm. They have the setup. They've taken down Kezu. They'll find Puppy as well. Uh-oh, an MP as well. Not done. Yeah, Jarex with the Blink Crush onto the Queen of Pain. Do they have the follow through lockdown? They don't, man. People will be able to blink out. Yeah. Glimpse still on cooldown, even though he is amped up. Oh, no, he actually wasn't amped. Okay, so they didn't get the amp for the vision anyway, but. Yep. Still Aegis on uh, OG. It should be expiring quite soon, but able to claim themselves the tier 3. Just kidding. The glyph got reset from killing bottom tower, so. There's a new glyph from it, and now Aegis is reclaimed. Great aggression coming out from OG. Ana oh. just making making the plays this game. No tell, actually, popping the Phantasm there, trying for a push mid. Pi, actually. Just coming out with a freezing field, MP without Sunny Wave. I guess he does have the Ag, so not too much of a deal there. Just to clear those illusions off and keep them away from their their, their structures. It's important to keep that Tier 3 alive. They don't want to be able to lose their Shrines already, because OG gets that Tier 3, they go straight for the two Shrines. Close the map control and get a little bit more net worth advantage. Top lane. Oh. Jarex. Oh no, he's... No, oh, if he made it out of there. That would have been a sad Ember, but it's a happy Ember. A lot of gold, look at that. 525 gold, gold for a kill on a support slard oh, arc. Chrono has been dropped here, but the CM's out. I mean, Kez is he, he's trying to come in on this, but he can't do anything at all with being disarmed there by that deafening glass. Oh, no, making plays. He has an Octarine I already. Mean, yeah, this what? is... This has been a great series for Ana. Yeah. yeah, they game one Storm, now this game to Invoker. You know, game one, it was like, all right, well, you want to attack me in the, the mid lane? Yeah, sure, I'll die. I'll come back hard. And then game two, it's like, well, I'll, I'll just trash the mid lane. I'll get miles ahead. I'll get that seven minute Midas and you won't be able to stop me. I'll yeah. farm. I'll get plus one Forge Spirits because I don't give a damn. Yeah, wants to have definitely the right pickup here too. Just able to CG easier with that. But yeah, Ana's just making plays. Like the Chrono was used. He gets the kill onto the Crystal Maiden. Like, just forces reaction. It was just beautiful plays by one player there. And, and now the, the tower is dead, so the shrines do start to get pressured. And not a lot that Secret can do, really. I mean, they, they, they do want to contest it, but look at that. The pesky, pesky purge creep. Guarding the way, purging up Puppy. 
And uh, he'll be caught out by the bolt. The sun strikes off the mark, though. No vacuum wall onto two. The tornado comes in, bringing Puppy down. And they're not done yet, OG. They'll chase for more. Glimpsing back, Kezu. The void's out for 50 seconds. No buyback available. He's not going to be there for this defense. And OG. They've got creeps in top. They can actually go mid still. The backdoor production's in. not ready. It's a buyback from Puppy. MP in the mid lane trying to cut the creeps out. Jarex has the setup, but all the Yules onto the Yules. Double Yules play there coming out from each player. MP's out of there. Oh, oh there's no one around to, to cancel it, so he's fine. I'll head back, finish off the shrine. OG continuing to get work done. No tail very close to having the money for the Reaver as he looks to build into the heart to rask. After that Manta pickup. Oh, this is getting very scary for Secret. Absolutely is. The CK is just going to be this really tanky frontliner for Ana to just go berserk with his teammates with the Wombo combo from the Darkseer and the Disruptor. We have seen them do it quite a couple times now in this game. Vacuum into the Static Storm. This completely inhibits Secret's potential to do much in the fights. Since they don't have BKBs, they don't have anything to really get them out of that. They do have... Yeah, no... Okay, now they do have the Glimmer Cape on Pi. It does come out quite a bit later just because he did go for that Midas that we mentioned. And Puppy does have now a Yule Scepter, at least to have easier setup for his stomps and defensive purposes. Diamond, I mean, do you think at this point as well we could see OG just play it safe and, and wait for the Roshan? Is there, is there any pressure on this this lineup? Or I mean, I, it feels like because of you know the drafts, they they can they can they can take this to whatever point of time they want to. OG can't they? Yeah, they're playing versus it's a you know it's like a one queen of pain. Yeah, it, well, I mean it's safe playing queen of pain. So one queen of pain, two ember. So and they have a CK invoker who are. Fairly farmed. The Invoker is incredibly farmed. CK is probably a little bit under what he wants to be, but the other heroes are also farming. The Slardar, he scales. Even though he did go for like the Blink Yule straight up full support setup build, you look, click, and fly, and he's about to have an Aghanims. Oh, so even dear. if they get the BKBs, if he's able to get good placements on the Static Storm's pre Aghanims, they obviously can't use their items because it's the AoE Doom. So that's going to be another huge factor for them to play into as well. A lot of this down to. So who gets the initial catch? Yeah, is secret... it going to be a big chrono or is it going to be a big static storm? You can just feel how pressured they are now, though. Yeah. Puppy picks up a gem. They're playing very, 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 very cautiously. While OG now are able to just play at the, whatever they really want to do. They're just going to go for the rose here and just farm and not really feel too worried I mean, inside a secret. They're being a little timid here, OG, on the rose attempt. Uh, you know, they're not fully committing. Yeah. Because, I mean, understandably, they, they do respect the fight potential around that pit, you know, both sides. With uh, some great spells to use in that very, very closed area. And a 3k gold. Where does he go next? Well, what are we going to see next picked up for this Invoker? Let's see. Uh, probably the Hex, right? Just getting the Hex for himself. Hex for Queen of Pain and Ember yep. and Void. Probably the best pickup. Unless maybe... I. I don't know if he will. I, I highly doubt it. Maybe he goes for like the Bloodthorn. Like I don't. I don't think that would be. That's just like a thing that would help him scale. Like and be more of a damage dealer. But I think more than likely the Hex is just the safe pickup. Maybe even like a refresher BKB. Maybe BK. Yeah. It's really depending on how he feels if he's pressured at all. He. I don't think he. Yeah. He hasn't even really decided just yet. He has a lot of options. We're going back into the pit secret. I do want to still play around with OG at this area. If one diving in, has the arcane rune to play around with as well. Octarine and yeah, Octarine and arcane rune. Secret do not want to let OG have that that Aegis. If OG get the Aegis, Secret very much in a position that is looking for them to lose at least one set of racks. With the siege potential OG will have with that Aegis in hand. They need they to just, take a fight around here. They are just waiting patiently. Who's going to make the first jump? Who's going to make the first slip up? That's the question. Also, they do have this kind of uh, advantage essentially around this area. Secret, you know, mid one with the boots of travel. He's able to push out lanes. Fly wants to smoke, yeah. He was pinging out to get on it to push up forward more. Here we go. Who's going to make that initiation? Jerax. They've got the Sunstrike vision. They actually hit Pi with it too. In fact, Kezu, he's already in the tree line. He's got a time walk himself away. Good tornado catches out two Pi. Incredibly low. Glimmer capes up and heads to north. Look to try and TP out, but the vacuum's there from S4. Pies out. Godlike now for Anna. With a man down for 45 seconds. 
OG could go for Roche, but they could go for more kills. It looks like they may not be done here. No tell. Can he get a rift onto anyone? Mid one, continue to hold the back, Kitsu. It's a lovely chrono. No but do they have the damage? And I mean, the Sonic Wave, is it enough? Or with the Remnant Jump, and they will take down one of the members. But the Static Storm's there, catching the Ember Spirit. And oh. they just don't have the damage, folks. And OG, they have the damage for days. Yeah, no tells getting now he's getting his farm, he's getting tankier, his illusions are getting tankier as well. With the reaver picked up, he's able to just live through the little bit of wombo combo that they had, but this Earth Splitter would have already been committed before the Chrono came out, so they did have the Sonic Wave and the Ember Spirit come in it, but it was, not enough. it was toward the end of the Chrono Sphere, and it's not enough versus what OG has right now. OG has the pipe, they have the Guardian Griefs to, to kind of like deter that big magical burst, but now yeah, one rack's cleaned up, second rack's looking going down, and this could just, this might just be it for it, then. Yeah, for sure, second set of racks down. Secret. It looks like they will be given a, a chance to live another day as OG back off. Spirit there with the, the stomp on, able to catch Jerex before he TPs out. Yeah, now Notel has his heart, so his illusions are very tanky, and now his, his, his hero is fairly unkillable if he I has mean, he backup from die. his teammates. I mean, yeah. It feels like, you know, obviously with the draft that Secret had, they had a plan, you know, as we talked about, and as we saw early on, they very, very quickly could burst down and kill the heroes. It was always going to get to this stage, though, 30 minutes or so in, especially in the game, where Anna's been given so much farm on the Evoker. You know, they, they have just superior damage and team fight on the side of OG. And as we saw there, you know, even when Kez was able to get these, these kind of cute little three-man chronos, there's, there's just not enough to do after it. Yeah, the OG just got too much of an advantage after that certain point. It's, it's it's very similar to the last game. When we look at this network graph, it's like, it hits... I mean, this one actually happened a bit sooner, but it's around like that like 20-minute to 30-minute mark where we talk about it so many times, yeah. how powerful OG is in their mid-game. They recognize what they need to do. They don't give up these, like, too many free kills. They gave a couple free kills on Jerax, but then they just swing in a massive momentum fashion. It's great. Honestly, great leadership is really what this shows. MP does now have the Octarine. I mean, they, are, they, they do obviously have good ways of clearing the waves out and pushing them back with the uh, spammability spam, spam of their spells, for sure. But OG, they're ready to look to try and clear out that third set of racks here with this push down on the bottom lane. MP... He's gonna need to head back and help out the team mid one. Oh, okay, Ana went for a Shiva's because he's got like zero, very low armor versus the Elder Titan as well. Reduces the physical damage more. Notel looking to be the aggressor. Uh, Meteor coming down onto the Queen of Pain. The controls there. Kezu comes in with a Chrono, but again, I'm not seeing those green health bars going down, Fog. I'm really not. The pipe, the, the Guardian Greaves. Notel's pretty far in, but he's got Aegis. Look at the Static Storm that's going to trap up Kezu. Oh, Jarex. nice two-man crush from Jarex. Yeah, just with the follow-up lockdown. There'll be buybacks coming out from Pi. We'll just try and hold OG back. And they get a kill, though. That's the question. I mean, Anna just pounding into the tower, jumping forward, looking towards mid. One who has to remnant himself back to the fountain. And OG, you just cannot keep them off your axe. And GG yeah, is cool. called OG. Take the series 2-0. And in both where the, the kind of early game seemed rather close, definitely mid-game onwards, very convincing from OG. Really. Very impressive. They definitely... I still...